Hey folks, this is Kalani. With less than a week until we're romping around the shores of Zandalar and Kul Turas, I figured it would be a great time to lock in my choices of classes for my main character and a few alts that I'm really excited to play. Obviously, I have way too much time on my hands, mainly thanks to you guys and gals, so I was thinking about trying to keep five characters in some state of readiness for whatever content comes our way. My main character will have the most time spent on it, as you might have guessed. A few of these alts will get a little bit more love compared to the others, but they should all get quite a bit of playtime each week. If you've been following along with some of my other videos for a while now, you might know that my main character going into Battle for Azeroth is my Paladin. I'll be focusing on protection so I can tank for my little Mythic Plus group. Hopefully we'll be able to push some pretty high keys when they open up a few weeks after launch. It's definitely something we're taking seriously this time around and honestly I'm really excited. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that my tanking skills haven't dulled too much over the years, but after playing around with every tank on the beta, I settled on Paladins for a variety of reasons. Firstly, I'm a sucker when it comes to shield. I don't think tanking without a shield is really tanking at all, which is pretty much every other tank except Paladin and Warrior. I could get around the whole shield tanking business if the class was a lot of fun to play, like monks or demon hunters, but the Paladin toolkit also suits me exceptionally well. I love supporting my teammates where I can, so having the option to throw out a heal or two to the group during my rotation breaks, or removing physical damage or debuffs with Blessing of Protection is something I find really cool, and saving the day is always a nice feeling, and you have so many abilities that open up that potential. And then there's Avengers Shield, which is probably my favourite tank ability in the game. Not only do you look incredibly cool while throwing around a bouncing shield, but it's also a fantastic source of interrupts and silences which we won't see a lot of in Battle for Azeroth, especially with the changes to Arcane Torrent. So right now it's basically just my favourite tank, and I plan to be tanking some difficult content. As for the other two specs, well, Retribution is something I enjoyed in Legion quite a bit, so I'm already familiar with it, and the changes the spec received in the pre-patch actually removed quite a few things that annoyed me. Crusade was frustrating to deal with because you hit like a wet noodle outside of its duration, and the Judgment and Mastery debuffs actually restricted your rotation a little bit. Without both of those, I'm planning on enjoying Retribution once again in Battle for Azeroth. It wouldn't be my first pick if I were to DPS the majority of the time, but that's not what I'm signing up for with Paladin. Holy Paladins would definitely be one of my choices if I were to play a healer, the other one being Disc Priest. I love the ability to deal damage while healing, and I think it's going to be really important for healers to deal as much damage as they can while they don't have anything else to do. Being a melee healer is also something really interesting and a little different compared to every other healer out there, and their single target toolkit is always going to be useful in any situation. I think if I ever do get around to healing some content, Holy Paladin should give me at least a little bit of fun. At this point though, I would still be playing Paladin if these two specs didn't exist. I have so much fun with protection that it sort of overshadows my thoughts and opinions on Rhett and Holy. They're playable to me, which is, you know great, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Now, if prompt were to change significantly, if some part of it were taken away or replaced with something I didn't find fun, I'd probably switch off Paladin pretty quickly. I'll also have to take into consideration the strengths of other tanks as we progress through the expansion. Right now, Prop Paladin seems to be doing pretty well for itself, I shouldn't have any issues with this first season of Mythic Plus. If that changes and Prop Paladins end up down the bottom of our tanking tier list, I might just change to a stronger tank. You might call it flavor of the monthly rolling, but if I'm going to be competitive in Mythic Plus, I can't be running around on a paper tank. Speaking of other tanks, in comes the Monk. Now the main reason why I'll be leveling my Monk really soon after my Paladin and keeping it as current as much as possible is because that's my fallback tank. If Paladin isn't doing so great in certain dungeons, the Monk gives me another option. Brewmaster is looking to be incredibly strong out of the gate, and it all comes down to that blasted stagger. It's just incredibly powerful, especially when you consider that Battle for Azeroth has made every tank more reliant on healers. You just can't do as much for yourself anymore, so if we need to have a healer, we may as well give them a helping hand and take a good chunk of our damage over time instead of up front. If you don't ping pong constantly from max health to low health, the healers will have a much easier job of keeping you alive. So while monks don't offer quite as much support or self-healing, they'll still be a fantastic tank for any form of content. It was actually a really close call between paladin and monk. I think I prefer the shield thing once again, and throwing your shield around is hilarious to watch. But monks are so mobile and just so beefy. You can take so much punishment on a brewmaster monk, and if things really get bad, you can outrun and outroll every thing anyways. Try that on a paladin. Oh, it's time to move. Out comes the horsey. And now I have to walk. 
not quite as effective for sure. So it's a great backup tank for me, but what about the other specs? This is also part of the reason why I'll be playing a Paladin over the Monk. I do enjoy Windwalker quite a bit. The recent nerf to Blackout Kick should hopefully bring back Rising Sun Kick as a worthwhile button to push, which was the only weird part about the spec for me. It does decently well in both single target and AoE situations, its cooldowns are really fun to use, and their abilities are very flashy. I think I enjoy it a little bit more than Rhett, but I'm also more familiar with Rhett, so it's something easier to pick up and get better results with. Mistweaver is probably one of the healers that I wouldn't really pick up and play, so while Windwalker might be a little fun for me, Mistwalker probably wouldn't get touched, which would be a bit disappointing. Maybe if monk tanks were heads and tails above the rest, and I at some point just had to heal for whatever reason, sure. Fine, but I wouldn't pick up a Monk Healer to play right now. I would pick up Disc, Priest, or Holy Paladin from my experiences on the beta. So my first two would be my two tanks. My Paladin should hopefully get the job done well enough, but if he doesn't, I also have a backup tank in the Monk. From there, I would definitely play my beloved Mage. If I wasn't tanking for my Mythic Plus team, I would be playing my Mage as my main character. Towards the end of Legion, I played a lot of Mage, far more than my Hunter, which a lot of people knew me for throughout Legion. Mage is also something I've been playing on and off for quite a while now, and I was having a blast with it throughout Antorus. I think it's pretty crazy that some of the more powerful legendary effects were made into talents for fire mages and to a lesser extent frost mages. It's going to be a lot of fun carrying those effects forward into dungeons and raids in BFA. Mages just seem to have a great toolkit for a ranged DPS. Each spec also plays differently enough that if you were to get bored of one, the others should still give you a bit of enjoyment and their mobility with Shimmer is just insane. One of the reasons that I wasn't fully able to get into Warlock was their lack of mobility, but also the fact that they, like most other casters, just don't have a way to cast while moving. Mages can blink across the room without cancelling their current cast. You can literally reposition while maintaining your full DPS. It's bonkers and so much fun, but it leaves me feeling a little slow or encumbered when I get around to playing some of the other casters. As for each spec, Frost is probably still my favourite right now. I know, I know, you might say it's dull, but I really enjoy the proc-based gameplay. It's super fun to blow up priority targets with a flurry combo, and I love the visual effects too. Fire would be a close second, especially with the reliance of crit being reduced somewhat, fire should still be viable at the start of an expansion, instead of being dead weight until they got enough crit. I kind of hope the Rune of Power playstyles don't come back, because I'm not a great fan of turreting that much, but we'll see how things go. Seeing crit after crit after crit is still wonderful, and firing off instant pyro blasts might be one of the most satisfying things in the game. I don't have much love for Arcane, mainly because of the ability spam. Sure, Frost and Fire will spam their fireballs and frost bolts now and then, but Arcane is literally just arcane blast right now. If you get into AoE situations, it gets a little bit more fun, but they even took the punch out of arcane missiles. They'll be great for burst damage, but I still don't think I would play arcane over frost and fire. Even though most of my attention will be spent on the paladin and monk, I'm excited to play around with my favourite class and favourite role in my spare time. The other class that I'm really excited to play, which might not end up getting as much playtime as I would like, is my Rogue. I really have fond memories of playing my Rogue, getting a relatively early Lich King heroic 10-man kill as assassination. Good times, but playing Rogue again on the Battle for Azeroth beta kind of revitalized a long-lost interest in the class. Maybe I should be over in Darkshore a little more, waiting in the shadows for a few players trying to finish some quests. That sounds like the real Rogue class fantasy right now. Not only are Rogues shaping up to be pretty strong again, but I was actually having a blast with all three specs even if I didn't realise Garot can now be used outside of stealth. I saw Garot and I just sort of assumed. It's not entirely my fault, okay? Fine, it is, but it was still a lot of fun, even without Garot. But Assassination was probably the spec I had the least amount of fun with. Both Outlaw and Subtlety really packed a punch in trash packs in dungeons, and let's be honest, who doesn't love seeing huge numbers? I still find Outlaw to be really interesting with its dice roll mechanic. The potential you can get out of a single roll is crazy. A little too crazy. I can see myself getting really frustrated with bad rolls if I were in a mythic raid, but there's also something just so satisfying about the risk-reward gameplay when you hit the jackpot. The rotation is really smooth too, which is probably why I enjoyed it so much. A few sword swings, a quick pistol shot, and a stab to the chest. I could see how it might get a little repetitive after a while, but it's probably the most fun I've had with a melee character in Battle for Azeroth. Subtlety was something I had to spend quite a bit of time trying to get used to, and I can still see so much room for improvements. But I also had a great time with the spec. Being able to channel multiple targets into crazy single target priority damage is going to be insanely valuable in some dungeons, and being able to swap back and forth between all of these different specs which excel in different encounters for different reasons is so incredibly valuable if you're wanting to progress through mythic content. Can you imagine if all three specs did amazingly well on AoE encounters and terribly on single target? 
That would be so lame. Thankfully, that's not the case, and each effect plays quite differently, so just like the mages, if one started to bore you, at least you have some other options to try and hold your interest. Rogues are probably my favourite melee class right now, so I'll definitely be levelling one up relatively early on. And then my last ult, my fifth class, was actually pretty hard to decide upon. I was interested in Warlock quite a lot, but I'm not sure I'd want to play a Warlock over my Mage. My Hunter has been my go-to since the end of Miss of Pandaria, but I'm not too keen on playing that anymore either. Druids are always a good pickup, but I haven't been enjoying them too much on the beta, and I thought I would get a lot of value out of having Demon Hunters or Death Knights leveled up to be able to swap over them for tanking, but between the Prompt Pallet and the Brewmaster Monk, I think I should have my bases covered. The only other class I've been having a blast with on the beta is Priest. Now, healing for me is a little weird, because I have a pocket healer everywhere I go, but this time I might just be able to sneak myself into the healer role now and then, and I would probably be playing Discipline. It's my favourite healer so far, so it's definitely something I'm interested in picking up and playing early on. Being able to not only help out a bit with damage, but having the ability to match an actual DPS on the damage meters is something that's quite addicting. You're keeping everyone alive, but you're also contributing an insane amount of damage as a healer. Hopefully your other DPS players will end up actually avoiding all of the bad stuff though, because the more damage they take, the less damage you can do. It sounds really wrong, but having to heal can sometimes make disc less fun, at least when the damage could have been avoided. Maybe that's just a long time DPS talking, and maybe I shouldn't burden groups with my attempted healing, but Disc is a lot of fun right now. Holy is a great healing spec too, but I don't think I have as much fun with it simply because your damage is a little bit of an afterthought like most other healers. Their toolkit is great and they play really smoothly, but I don't think that's what I'm looking for in a healer right now. Shadow is a bit of an oddball, because I actually enjoy Shadow quite a lot right now on the beta. I think the changes make it a little more fun to play right off the bat, but I do miss being able to stay in void form for the ridiculous lengths of time you could throughout Legion, and Surrender to Madness probably won't see any playtime again in its current state, which is disappointing because that kind of risk-reward gameplay doesn't seem to last very long in World of Warcraft these days. Shadow will also see some changes in 8.1, so we don't even know what the state of the spec will be in after we get our very first major content patch. I definitely wouldn't put all of my eggs into the Shadow basket, but I'm still going to have fun with it here and there. And that's the five classes I'll be leveling up early on in Battle for Azeroth, and my reasons why. This will probably end up being something like 80% of my time on my Paladin with the rest split up among the others, as I find the time and motivation to gear them up or as some easy gearing options become available like Warfronts and World Bosses, but I'm still excited to play a few different classes this time around. Throughout Legion I think I spent too much time on my Hunter, and I really don't think I'll play it all that much throughout BFA, maybe a little later on. Eventually I'll have every class at 120 for a variety of reasons, some of which you might find out about if you stick around with the channel. I'm sure there's going to be gold making strategies you can exploit with multiple characters, like the Order Hall gold farming or BOA token farming. There's usually a good reason to have a few max level alts swimming around. But that's it for this video. What classes are you going to spend most of your time on in Battle for Azeroth? Do you have any alts planned for early on? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon. If you want to hop on that train, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.